What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we started working on our applied energistics a little bit. We set up our Emmy controller down here. We got three of the controller blocks. And since then, I started running some Emmy cables in preparations for hooking things up to be automated. Uh, but before we start working on that, I was kind of noticing that our food supply, our plowman's lunches were getting a little low. So I was kind of looking at different options that we can do to kind of like help ourselves out a bit and make this easier. Now, one of the roughest parts about making the plowman's lunch is the sweet pickle, strangely enough, because we need sugar. Yeah, we don't really have a great way of making sugar. Now you can take sugar cane and put it into your crafting grid and make it one to one. That's kind of cool. Uh, we, or I just got done swapping out our pumpkins that we have over here. Uh, swapped out our pumpkins for sugar canes and we're just kind of growing a little bit of sugar cane right now now you can get two at a time doing it this way but again the sugar cane is only one sugar per one sugar cane that's the vanilla recipe so we saw previously let me sleep real quick we saw previously earlier on that we can take a sugar cane put it into the pam's harvest craft squeezer yeah and then you get two out of it but you gotta wait right so you put it in here, it doesn't cost any power, but it takes this long per sugar cane, and then you double, right? So we could set up an automated process where we have a bunch of these doubling it all the time, and then we need a bunch of these blocks, pipes, and we have to use a garden cloche in order to like collect that stuff automatically. And that would be another way of doing it. But I was kind of looking here a little bit ago, if we look at the uses for sugar, actually, let's put it over here. So if we look for the use, or I'm sorry, the recipe for sugar, not the uses, uh, yeah, we can see the presser. We can also get out of bees. I think we used that kind of early on too. Uh, we can get sugar from bees, which we're not going to do, but the squeezer, this kind of interested me. Uh, the squeezer, you can jump on this thing, squeezes, flattens, and crushes by jumping on it. Redstone pulse to reset. So pretty much what you want to do if you're going to use one of these squeezers is you make a squeezer, you put like a pressure plate on it, you put your items on there, and then you, you jump on it, right? So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, that'll get us a little bit more, but it is a manual process, which kind of sucks. But let's check it out. So it's one block of iron, one iron ingot, four sticks, and two planks. Easy. And we get an advancement for doing it. Squeezing like a boss. Oh, can we not? Oh, it doesn't have any interface on there. I thought you could put stuff in there. So right click. Okay, you only put one item in at a time. And then I think... Uh, pressure plate is probably the best option for this let's just make a wooden one since we already have wood here why not oh can you not do it? oh i thought you could put the pressure plate on top maybe i'm thinking of something else or maybe this was changed i don't know do i have to jump on this okay there it is and then you can do the pressure plate to reset it i guess this has been changed since the last time i did this i seem to recall that you put a pressure plate on top and then you just sat there and jumped on it. And that's all you did and it would like self reset. But it looks like this mod has been changed ever so slightly since that time. So yeah, there is what appears to be, yeah, there's a, a little bit of a feedback that shows you like the progress that you've made and as you jump on it, that plate gets lower and lower, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Okay, so we collect a little bit of sugar then you can reset it. All right, so that's kind of cool. But that's not something that I want to do. <laughs> I want an automated process, right? So we look at this. That's a squeezer. There's a mechanical squeezer here. And this one says squeezes, flattens, and crushes using energy. So this is like an upgraded version. Now, here's another thing. Uh, the regular squeezer gives you two sugar and a 50% chance at a second one. The mechanical squeezer gives you four sugar with a 50% chance of a fifth one. So this is what you want to do, I would imagine. Now we do have other options. We can do uh, through a sawmill, you get two of them, 100% chance, and you get pulped biomass. I'm not sure what that's used for, if that's useful or not to us. Uh, centrifugal separator, looks like you can get two of them and a little bit of water if you wanna go that route. Uh, crusher, yep, you can get three of them at a time. What else do we got here? Sag mill, that's only 50% chance at two additional ones. So you can get up to three, but it's probably not that likely you will. Uh, crushing tub, hmm, kind of the same thing I would imagine. And then if we had molten sugar, you can form it into an ingot, I guess, into regular sugar. 
But anyway, this is what I want to do. The mechanical squeezer here. Let's put this over onto our bookmark section. So that requires two diamond dust, three of the regular squeezers, two obsidian plates, and that is just obsidian compressed. Pretty simple stuff. And then an energy battery. So this is something that's a little different. We need mineral. This is something we have not had to mess with at all, but you know what? I didn't even realize before that holds 100,000 RF. That would be really, really easy early game stuff, I think. Um, okay, so mineral comes from mineral trees, I do believe. Probably should look that up, actually. Let's put all this stuff away. I was doing some bone mealing earlier. Uh, let's go back. This mineral block drops okay so enriched mineral wood gives you one crystallized mineral is what it says so we can take mineral wood put it through a mechanical squeezer and we get this it does not look like it works on the regular squeezer although i imagine it might uh and then it looks like you get a little bit of mineral resin must be another thing that this squeezer does has like a fluid inventory can we do anything with that mineral resin we can turn it into a block of crystallized mineral interesting Okay, well, I think the first things first that we need to do here, let's go out into the wild. Jump around. We gotta find the uh, the blue leaf trees. I know I've seen mineral trees around and we've never had a reason to mess with them yet. Uh, they're really not that hard to find. I mean, they stand out. Maybe they're a little more rare than I thought they were. Is that one right there? That's one right, no, that's silverwood. Uh, I know I've seen them around here, so let me just fly around for a second, see if we can come up with a mineral tree. I'm sure we'll find one here very soon. Ah, these are them. I was thinking they were like a brighter blue color like the silver wood. No, these are what we're looking for right here. Yeah, those are mineral. I kind of like backtracked. We were over this way and our base is right here. Yeah, I kind of backtracked over here into like a... I guess this is a mangland biome. Not sure if that means anything or not. Uh, but anyway, this is what we're looking for, the mineral leaves. So let's go ahead and destroy all the leaves. And by destroying the leaves, we get the mineral berries. Tasty and illuminating. And we get some mineral saplings so we can grow more mineral trees. Awesome. So this does not appear to have any of the enriched logs. I'm not sure how you enrich them. But anyway, let's just go ahead and destroy the entire tree here. Uh, okay, so we just got the mineral wood. Is this, oh, that must be a different type of a log. I wonder why they didn't vein mine. What do we get there? One crystallized mineral chunk. Only one of them. Huh. Okay, I was expecting us to get a little bit more than this, but apparently not. Oh, we just got seven of them. Oh, that's why they didn't vein mine, because they were different. They are the ones that had the, the mineral chunks in them. Okay, interesting. So that must be the same thing. Oh, here we go. Yeah, enriched mineral wood. Aha. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and chop down a few of these things. We will collect. I wonder if fortune works on that. We got seven. Probably not, but maybe. Thirteen. I don't know if that actually did anything, <laughs> to be completely honest. Let me chop down a few of these trees, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, so I jumped down quite a few trees. We got three and a half stacks of the mineral wood. We got almost a stack of the mineral berries and a, quite a few of the mineral saplings. So we got everything together now to make the mechanical squeezer, and there we go. I don't know if there's a quest for this thing or not, but let's just set it down and take a look at it. So we can right click. We do get ourselves a new tab here. And if I put in the mineral wood, we can get the crystallized mineral chunk now. We're also collecting this mineral resin, and I think, hold on a second, let's take this out. Now, the mineral resin, um, let's go back to here, recipe this. Uh, actually, no, this, 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 the mineral resin uses. So it says one bucket, 1,000 millibuckets equals a block of crystallized mineral. So the crystallized mineral is nine of these. And each one of those is giving us one full bucket of that, plus the crystallized mineral chunk. So pretty much we're never going to run out of mineral at this point. Yeah, once you get the mechanical squeezer and a little bit of power, like you have all the mineral stuff. That's actually kind of crazy how much that you're getting for doing that. Yeah, each one of these buckets for every log, you're getting 
a full nine of these chunks plus these pieces here. Interesting. Okay, well, now that we have that, we can swap over from doing what we are doing to a little bit of sugar and we, or I guess sugar cane, and start getting ourselves some sugar. So we have four, eight, as I think it's a 50% chance to get a fifth one, right? That's what we saw. Well, it looks like we're getting four every time. You know what? Even if it's just four every time, there we go. We got an extra one that time. Even if it's four every time, that's really, really good. So we can get four stacks, a little over four stacks from one stack of sugarcane. So that's going to make our life so much better going forward. This mineral resin, though, I am kind of curious. Can we grab ourselves like a reservoir? Wait, do I have stuff in there? That's empty. Okay. Let's grab this. If I right click on here, I can take all of that out. 10 buckets. Now, can I click that onto here? We, I made another one of these, if I never mentioned that before. And this one, I put the base and upgrade in there with the full amount of slots. I'm curious, can I just right click that on here? Is there a way to do that? Doesn't look like it. So I wonder what the best way, can I click it on here? Oh, I can put it into there and then can I just, how much do we put in there? One bucket? Okay, so we can put all the mineral resin in there and can I just pour it out like that and turn it into the blocks? Kind of looks like this is working, but we'll find out real quick and see if this actually does what we want it to do. Oh yeah, there we go. And then one of these blocks, nine of those crystallized mineral chunks, that is really interesting. Okay, so this mineral wood is very important. We don't want to throw that away. These are uh, semi-important. So we figured out a lot of cool things that we can do here. We are going to mostly... Oh, yeah, just one right click fills up from here. Okay, let's put all that into the smell tree and just turn it all into those blocks then. Just grab another bunch of that, put that into the smell tree. All right, and then the last little bit of that... Cool. So that should fill up here. You can only hold up to five blocks since we have the upgrade four in here. The rest of that will just fill up into this internal tank. And then when I take out these blocks, they'll just instantly turn in. Oh my goodness, we got so many blocks of the mineral resin. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm going to let this thing go and then I will uh, keep track of that. So anyway, now that we have this sugar, we should be able to do what we need to do down here. Continue on uh making our stuff making the rest of our sweet pickles i believe is what it was yeah let's make a stack of those awesome okay well i'm going to continue on with this uh if we run into anything else that we can automate a little bit better or get resources faster i'll bring you guys back but uh really i just want to make another stack of this plowman lunch and i was getting kind of tired so I was just in the process here of making the boiled eggs and we've been using the, where is it? The tofu egg, this stuff. So that requires firm tofu, a cutting board, and then dandelion yellow. So I just went around and I collected over a stack of dandelions because one dandelion turns into the dandelion yellow. And I also grabbed some sunflowers while I was out. Um, and the way we collected these dandelions before, I believe was just bone mealing the grass over here, right? And then you know, you'd sometimes get them. So I farmed up a bunch of them that way previously, but this time I decided just to go out into the wild and collect over a stack. And then, like I said, I saw the sunflowers while I was out there. And then I got to thinking after I got back here, you know, I bet the uh, dandelions, we can do something with the mechanical squeezer. And sure enough, the dandelion, you can get four of those per squeeze with the chance of getting an additional two, 50% chance. So yeah, we ended up getting quite a bit of this dandelion yellow off of less than a full stack of dandelions, right? So that's pretty cool. But yeah, then I got back here with the sunflowers and I was like, you know what? We can bone meal those, can't you? Yep. Okay, so we have an unlimited source of this yellow dye. We don't have to go out for the dandelions anymore. And then I was looking at the uses for this and sure enough with the mechanical squeezer, you get eight of them per sunflower. So it costs one bone meal for over eight dandelion yellow. And you get a 50% chance at two more and a second 50% chance at two more. So you get so much yellow dye off the <laughs> sunflowers. That is obviously the way to go going forward. Oh my goodness. Look how fast we're getting all this stuff and how little sunflower we are actually using. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's what we're doing from now on for the plowman lunch. If we continue using that food, I uh, just got to make sure we always save one dandelion or uh, one sunflower, but I guess sunflowers really aren't that difficult to find out in the wild. 
Um, the only other thing is, though, making the raw tofu egg is that we need to uh, do the squeezer for the firm tofu, which means we have to take soybean, turn it into the silken, and then take that silken and then put it right back through the squeezer to get the firm tofu. Is there another method for us to do that? We have the centrifugal separator from thermal expansion. Uh, okay, so let's see. Silken. We can put the soybean in there, get silken tofu. That costs 4,000 RF, apparently. And then the uses for that, we can put it into uh, the centrifugal separator again. So we could do that probably way faster with the cost of RF than we're doing it for free. But since we haven't upgraded a reactor yet, I think we're just going to continue using this thing for now. Uh, yeah, we'll just put those in there. I need to bone meal a bunch more of our plants over here, the soybeans, uh, get a bunch more of that, turn it into the firm tofu, and then we can finally move on. All right, so one final thing here with our pressers, I kind of rearrange things and set it up to be in a more automated way. You just place the soybean in the top chest. It gets extracted out through the servo into the presser here. Yep, so we can just place these guys right here. And it always keeps this top one stuck. Now we're using like really terrible item ducts and like the lowest servo, but we don't need something super fast. These pressers are kind of slow themselves. So anyway, we're extracting out of the bottom of the presser, which is taking both the grain bait and the silken tofu, putting into the item duct here. I put a filter, so we're only allowing through the whitelist silken tofu to go into our presser here. So that's ending up right here. And then that's producing firm tofu and soy milk, which is being extracted out of the bottom of this guy uh, right into a chest here. So now we're getting firm tofu at the bottom. We have another filter on our first presser that's set to white, or I guess blacklist the silken tofu. So the grain bait's gonna end up over here. Now it'd probably be best if we ended up setting up like a trash can or a trash chest or something, because this will eventually fill up and this whole thing will back up, but that's only gonna be an issue if I ever put in more than like a full uh, single chest worth of stuff of soybean in the top one, I don't think that's really gonna be an issue. Uh, down here, however, if we put more than half a chest, we're gonna fill up uh, because we're getting both soy milk and firm tofu for every single silken one. Yeah, so any, anyway, we'll just keep track on this. We're not making a whole lot of this stuff. We really just wanted to get ourselves um, a full stack of the firm tofu to make the tofu eggs and make the rest of our plowman's lunch, which we should be able to do at this point now. No problem at all. We'll just put the dry ingredients in there and our firm tofu in the fridge. Not like it really matters. You can put it into any of the inventories. I just choose to do it that way regardless. So we need to make the egg, the raw tofu egg. So that's the tofu plus the dandelion. So we will make two stacks of that. That's awesome. Again, we'll throw that into the fridge. And then now we should have all the ingredients together to make a full stack of the plowman's lunch, unless they have missed something, which it kind of looks like I might have. What did we miss? I have the bread. We have the apple, onion, sweet pickle. Oh, did I not make the sweet pickles, actually? We have the sweet pickle. What else are we missing here? Uh, the cooked bacon, the tofu, we have that. Or did I just miss it in this list? I think we have everything here, but it's not showing up. What else? What else? What else? Oh, I didn't make the boiled egg. That's right. We made the tofu egg. Yeah, we have to make the boiled egg. Derp. All right, so there is two of those. All right, now we can finally make ourselves another stack of the plowman lunch. <laughs> All right, let's make as much as we can. All right, so we got a stack plus 23 of them. Awesome. Ah, okay. A refrigerator. Our refrigerator took a big hit here. We lost a lot of items, but it's all good. Now we have plenty of food to continue on. All right, guys. So our next task here is to make our reactor a little bit bigger. We want to make it more efficient by having better reactivity. And you get better reactivity by having more fuel rods inside closer together. That'll reduce the amount of millibuckets per tick that we're using on our fuel. Yeah, we are using it quite quickly right now, and we are making a pretty decent amount of cyanide. 
Now, it's kind of looking, there really isn't a whole lot of uses for cyanide. We can't reprocess that into plutonium to put back into the reactor. It's used for, like, the ultimate ingot, and it's used for making some of, like, the uh, turbines and stuff. But other than that, it really has no other use. So this is not fuel that we can use again. Okay. Uh, so I went and I took all of the crushed endstone that we have. I sifted it. I converted those into the uranium uh, ore. Then I pulverized it and smelt it. Now this is the fuel that we have right now. We had actually ran out of fuel. Yeah. Our generators over here kicked on. They're making a whole bunch of noise. In fact, they still are because mechanism. Uh, <laughs> even though they're not doing anything. Um, yeah. And then I grabbed the ore that was out of this thing, our void ore miner. I grabbed all of the ore, the uranium, and since then you can see how much we've gotten. We've gone over, uh, we've got nearly a stack and a half, a stack and a half of lithorite, which is pretty good. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. So this reactor needs to be bigger, which, which means we need more reactor fuel rods. We need reactor control rods. The uh, fuel rods do require this hardened glass. So I was kind of looking at the recipe for that. It's not that expensive. Lead and pulverized obsidian, big deal. The reactor casing does require us to have the steel ingots, which we can get through mechanism now, which is quite simple to do. And it requires the graphite bars. Now, as we've seen before, graphite, um, this one, this graphite is made just by smelting charcoal or coal or graphite dust uh, in a furnace of some description. We get the graphite ingots. And we can take the graphite ingots and just convert it over into the extreme reactors version or just use them exactly as they are for whatever our purpose is. Now, this does require us to have the uranium ingots. Okay, so we have plenty of that ready to go for our fuel. Um, and then the reactor glass, if we want to do that, requires more of the hardened glass plus the reactor casing. So my what, I, what I'd like to do here is get this so it has five fuel rods. We're going to do it in like a plus pattern or maybe like, uh, you know, one in the center and one in the four corners, something like that. Either, you know, a plus or like uh, an X, I guess. doesn't really matter. Uh, but that's kind of what I want to do to expand this out a little bit and maybe make it taller. Yeah, we might go into the ground a bit with this thing. Uh, so if I remember correctly, and... You know, these reactors have changed a bit since I did my initial testing, but it seemed like the reactor was always better if you had like three blocks of space between the outside casing and the rod in the center. Now, this is quite small like, for that. Obviously, we only have one block of space instead of three. And then when we make this bigger, it's going to be a three by three in the center with the fuel rods. And if we want three blocks of space all around it, that's going to make it, what, like nine blocks wide on the inside. So it has to be like 11 by 11 by 11. So that's going to be, well, at least 11 by 11, depending on how tall it is. Uh, so that's going to make this, you know, quite a bit bigger. So we're going to need a lot of the casing stuff. Now, the casing also does require the reactor casing core, which requires ferroboron alloy and hard carbon. The hard carbon is pretty inexpensive. Well, I mean, it does cost diamonds, but we have loads of those. So graphite, so essentially coal and diamond, that's not that big of a deal. The ferroboron, however, does require us to have boron plus steel. So yet more steel, we can make that pretty easily. The boron, though, comes from the boron ore, which we found in like the large ore piles underneath the, yeah, I guess in the ground or whatever. We used a scanner to find that earlier on. But now that we are progressed a little bit further in the pack, we don't really have to do it that particular method. So the boron we can get from the ore pieces, which we can sift, which is pretty awesome. So you get a 20% chance on the diamond, you get a 15% chance on the iron, and you get a 10% chance on the flint. So we'll use our diamond stiffened meshes for this, but we're going to need the crushed nether rack. Now, we've seen how easy it is for us to get the crushed pieces when we went to the end the last time. Since then, I have made a... Well, I've just repaired the diamond hammer that we had, and I put unbreaking on it. I was kind of hoping that we could put mending on there and uh, keep this thing full all the time, but I don't think there's any way for us to get experience with this particular hammer as we're mining in the nether. Yeah, I don't think that's a thing. But that's what we're, our next step is, is to go to the nether, get a whole bunch of netherrack. We're going to be in mind using this hammer. 
which should result in us getting quite a bit of the crushed netherrack. Um, I forget, did I make a hole into the nether ceiling? No, not from here. I will do that. We're just going to drill straight up here. Um, it'll be much better once we get proper flight, not this the current flight that we have, because now we got to sit and wait. Yeah, we'll just make like these little places where we can kind of catch our breath, so to speak, to let our ring of the squid fill up. But yeah, we're just going to dig straight up here. Hopefully, actually, you know what I should do? I was going to say, hopefully we don't run into lava, but I should put a block in my in my hand here. Yeah, that'll be fine dirt or something. In case we do run into lava so we can plug up the hole and not die to it. Yeah, that's probably going to be a pretty smart idea. All right, so now that we're all the way up here, we're going to just vein mine a little bit. Okay. Oh, do we already have crushed netherrack in here? Oh, no, we have regular netherrack. I used the wrong tool. My mistake. Okay, so we got a little bit of a, a gap here. So let us just do the top block. All right, so now we should have a bunch of crushed netherrack in here. Very good. We'll just throw that into our dink knoll like so. Yep. And we're going to get a whole bunch of that. Now, I do got to go through and make sure we get rid of all of the lava so we don't end up burning ourselves. Or I guess I can get myself a, a potion of fire resistance or whatever. But anyway, I'm going to continue to do this, get a whole bunch of that, then we're going to sift it, and we'll be right back, guys. Whew, this is an involved process, guys. I've made enough reactor casing here, so we got three stacks of it. I made enough of the fuel rods so we can do five... Uh, three tall. Yep. If we need to make them, um, if we need to make the reactor taller for more power, we can do that later. That's fine. But I just want to make it more efficient right now and produce a little bit more power. I don't want to go like super, super crazy extreme at the moment. Uh, yeah. So this recipe right here, I forgot about this. Uh, for the reactor control rod, we need these ultimate control circuits. So the elite control circuit is made just by normal crafting. You need four of the re reinforced alloy, the diamond ones with the advanced control circuit, which is made with the enriched alloy ones and the basic control circuit and some redstone. So anyway, it's a little bit more of an involved process to make that. Uh, you can do it with the Draconic Evolution or the Empowerer. And since we have the Empowerer, that's the way we're doing it right now. And it looks like eventually we'll be able to do a combination crafting, which is probably gonna be the easier way that we'll wanna do this way later on. Yeah, anyway. So it looks like all of those are now done so we can make the rest of our control rods. Uh, so this guy, that guy, let's put all these in the system and some of that in there. So there is four control rods. There's our fuel rods, reactor casing. There's that. Yeah, and we got a whole bunch more of the casing core because I don't know how big we're going to make a reactor. I figured we should just get a whole bunch of this stuff together. So if we have to go bigger later, we don't have to worry about doing everything. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all we need. Now it's a matter of me disassembling the reactor, making it bigger. Uh, I'm probably going to dig it down into the ground. I'm thinking this reactor is gonna end up being 11 by 11. So I'm gonna wanna center it a little bit pro more properly around here. Yeah, anyway, it's going to be an involved process. Let me go ahead, get to that, start digging, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so we really didn't have enough of the reactor casing, so I made more. I filled out the reactor, and then I tore down the other one, so we got a little bit recovered uh, from the previous reactor, but that's what we're looking like right now. This is, like, one of the ugliest reactors I have ever made, but we'll make a better, like, as we go. So pretty much the way these reactors work is it only matters about the control rod and the case, the fluid that's in between. So you don't have to have still source blocks in every single location here. Uh, so one source block was not enough no matter where I placed it to fill in all the airspace between the casing or uh, the control rods and the casing. So I had to do two source blocks to fill in all the space. Uh, the corners don't matter. There's no like control rod between the, between, uh, you know, the edge and these corners. So these are can just be completely air. So I have them all sealed off with nether rack. Um, so yeah, all four sides are done exactly the same. We have a total of eight sources of the resonant ender. Uh, so now we can just go ahead and bean mine away all the nether rack. That should all just flow down and yeah, do what it needs to do. It's not going to look pretty, but we're not going to have a window to look into this thing at the moment. We might do that later, but for right now, no. Uh, so we got the computer right here. Uh, I think this program is, 
is designed so it has to be the back of the computer touching the computer port. I could change it so it can be the bottom, put the computer on top or something, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. I just want this thing back up and running again. So I think everything should be set up. We got our cryo stabilized connected to our main power system. Um, yeah, and then I have a diamond wand here. Let's set this thing to be horizontal. So a thing about this diamond wand, I was putting some quartz down below. You guys might have seen that at the start of the episode, the floor down there, I have made quartz and the wand will pull blocks out of your dank knoll, which is very nice. So you don't have to fill up your entire inventory full of whatever material it is. You just fill up the dank knoll full of it. And yeah, it will pull from that inventory just the same as if it was in your normal inventory. I thought that was pretty nice. All right, so we place that here. It looks like everything is sealed up. Um, I have the reactor controller on the top. I don't know if I've ever done that before, but let's see if this thing works. Oh yeah, looks like we're working. So we can see the reactivity now is well above the 100% it was before. We're now at 400%, uh, but you can see that we're using a lot more millibuckets per tick, or roughly the same, but we are generating way more power than we were before. Now the computer should, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm probably gonna have to adjust this thing so we're not wasting power. It looks like we are just on the brink of wasting, no, we are wasting it. So this thing should be updated um, so like it puts the control rods at 100% when we reach like 70% of the main power. Um, I mean, it's still gonna work the way it is, but we're still generating RF right now. And now it's starting to pull that RF out of here. So we've wasted like 30 seconds of this thing cooling down worth of RF. So yeah, we kind of want to set it up so it doesn't act like that anymore, but this is really good. It looked like we we're making about 24,000 RF per tick. Let's um, do that real quick. Let's, let's see, control change all rods. I think it's shift control down. We'll just waste some fuel here. Oh, the computer, let's turn the computer off. Uh, T, control T. All right, let's try this again. Control shift down. We'll see how much power we are generating here because I don't quite remember what it was. We'll let this thing warm all the way up and we'll waste a bit of fuel while we check it out. So we're making 25, 26, 27,000, maybe up to 28,000 when this thing gets all the way in 27 and a half. Okay, yep, that is really, really good. All right, let's turn the computer back on and let it do its thing here. So all these control rods should be inserted 100%. The heat's going down and we're no longer generating power from the fuel anymore. Okay, so yes, this thing holds a lot more fuel. It uses about the same amount, but we're producing way more power, about five times the amount of power that we were before. So this thing will fill up really fast before it starts using the energy buffer. Okay, we can connect this guy back to here. This was one of the main reasons why I wanted to do that to have this thing going all the time and have a reactor produce enough power for the rest of the base so we don't have to worry about running out of power or uh, like I was having to do constantly over here, disconnect this thing so we can run the rest of our machines. We should be pretty much good to go at this point. Now the next step is I'm gonna end up digging out uh, this side under here, right? Same as we did for this main area. And then we can move some of these things down below like our computer so we don't have to access it from up here. But for the time being, like we don't have a way to get to the bottom side of this reactor yet. So everything is on the top. Um, so yeah, we are, how, how does the computer say that we're doing here? So we're discharging about 4,000, a little over 4,000 right now. Uh, yeah, when this thing gets to 20%, it will kick on. Uh, have it go full throttle, fill all the way back up. Maybe we should set the computer while it's discharging right now. Edit startup. Uh, we want this thing to, yeah, if it's at 8 million, let's do 7 million. We'll do it that way. Save, then exit, control R to reboot. So we're discharging right now. We're about to 2 million, then it should start kicking back on. There we go. So. Once this thing gets to about 70%, it should turn back off and hopefully at that point, 
we're a little bit more fuel efficient. We're not just wasting that additional power the, that the reactor was making from this the heat and stuff. All right, so it's turned back off. We are filling back up to about 84%. Yeah, I think that's better. Well, you know what? If we had it the way it was before with this thing connected, I think we'd be okay. But either way, you know, if it's at 80% or 70%, it doesn't really matter. We're still within the buffer. We're not going over. We're not going under. I think everything's going to be okay. But guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today. Yes, we got a much better power system going on here, which means we should be okay for expanding out our applied energistic system, which I kind of wanted to work on today, get the auto crafting, but we're going to do that probably next time. Uh, now that we got power under control, we have a large amount of power at our disposal. I think we're going to be in a much better position. Now, I think we could also add more uh, fuel rods here and turn this into like a 3x3 three three ring with a hole in the center or maybe even make it a full 3x3 three three for more power and more reactivity. I'm not sure, but we, if we do do that, it'll be sometime in the future because we can also make this reactor just taller for more power. Anyway, guys. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.